Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so last video I did talk about how to diagnose a failing hybrid battery, specifically on the Gen 2 Priuses. Um, and today I am going to show you what it looks like once the pack is assembled and how to actually take a look at those individual failing cells. Um, so what I'm doing here actually is going through and reconditioning the rest of the packs. So that way it'll be good to go once I put it back into the vehicle. I'm also ensuring that the capacity of any given module here is going to be acceptable because I did order more than the number of cells that have failed in this pack. Um, so without going any further, let's go ahead, jump right in, and I'll show you what I've got so far. All right, so I'm not going to go ahead and show how to take the hybrid battery out of the car. There's plenty of videos on that. Chris Fix probably has the best video on how to remove the Gen 2 batteries from the car. So like I said, not going to show that on my channel. Also want to make sure that I stress that if you do this yourself, it is at your own risk. I will put in some tips and tricks of things that I've done that have worked for me. Um, but if you end up doing this, there are warnings and there are things all throughout the pack um, telling you that you could be in some danger doing this. There are some hot wires in certain places, um, but like I said, at your own risk, but this will work for me and it's going to save me quite a bit of money and also help me probably profit off of this car as well. So uh, when I first got the pack apart, I did go ahead and label all of my modules. You can see here that I labeled them from one and on the Gen 2s, uh, cell number one is on the far end of the battery. So if I have this installed in the car, this is the right side and that is the left side. That is also the side of the ECU. So the module closest to the ECU is 28. Furthest away is cell number, or sorry, module number one. And what you do, um, I took all of the bus bars and all of our nuts off. So here you can see we just have open leads and it does go negative, positive, negative, positive, all the way down. Uh, they are wired in series. So what I did is took all that off and then I took my multimeter and I went ahead and tested every single module down the pack, all 28. And I do have two that are low, um, and I'm going to show you those here real quick. Right, and as you can see, so I've labeled our, our modules. One does actually start on column two, or row two there. Um, but I've gone down the list through my modules, and you can see here that we currently have all of them captured, and we have two bad ones that are about 1.2. Uh, volts low there. So those are my two bad modules that will be getting replaced. I've also highlighted one. I believe this is yep module number eight That was just a little bit low. So I want to make sure that I get that captured as well um, Maybe possibly replace that one everything else is almost almost everything is 7.84 just a little bit higher So that is how I was able to test those um, and let me show you what I'm doing to balance the pack as well So what I'm doing now, um, I actually have some uh, alligator clips on cell number eight because that was the one that I wasn't sure was going to be, or module eight that was a little bit low on that voltage. I have a hobby charger and discharger, and this is the Tenergy, and I don't have the model number on here, uh, but it is a Tenergy hobby charger, um, and it does, does discharge at about five watts or one amp. Um, really just depends on the voltage of the battery. Um, so in my case, 0.7 amps uh, at 7 watts is going to be, or 7 uh, volts is going to be about 5 watts. Um, and it also tells you the capacity. So it'll do a discharge, which is what it's doing now, and it'll discharge to about empty. I have it discharging to probably about 5%, 10%, just to protect the cell a little bit. And then it'll charge it all the way up to close to 100, and then it'll give me an estimate of that capacity. And these cells are rated for 6.5 amp hours or 6,500 6, milliamp hours. Um, so this is going to be my way of testing each individual module within the pack, making sure that they do have at least close to uh, usable capacity remaining. And you can see that this does take a long time. I'm at 92 minutes uh, just for this first cell, and I'm going to do this four times for each module. So this is going to take probably quite a while. And that's where you could invest in a nicer hobby charger. I got a cheap $60 charger. Um, but this is what I'm going to do. And then um, I'll have another video as well on how to diagnose or actually replace these individual cells within the pack. But again, Chris Fix does that um, on his video. And it's pretty neat uh, to go ahead and watch that one. I can link that in the description of this one. Um, and I also have my bus bars over here. Um, and all of the nuts, you can see they're in vinegar and they're currently 
getting some of that corrosion off. I highly recommend doing that. These looked so much worse when I took them off and now they're starting to look coppery again. So, yep, highly recommend you do that if you do get this deep into your hybrid battery. Definitely make sure you get that corrosion off. All right. Well, that will conclude this video. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put those in the comments below. Go ahead and subscribe if you like this video and would like to see more like it. Um, and we'll have another video or more on what it looks like to replace these modules. So you'll see those coming up here in a little bit. All right, we'll catch you in the next one.